Hello there, everyone. How you doing today? I hope you are all well. As you may have noticed, I've gone back to the 2D model. I am bound to uh, bounce back and forth as time goes on. Anyway, with that out of the way, today we're going to be reading A Little Bunny's Doctor. A story from the SCP Wiki, Parawatch section. Now, strap yourselves in and let's get started. Count Julius Production. When I was younger, I frequently spent time in the hospital due to my undeveloped immune system. Some kind of disease or something. Just meant I'd get sick much easier. My parents worked late hours to pay for it. So I was usually alone, nine-year-old me, coughing and sneezing and suffering in the hospital bed. It didn't upset me too much. I suppose I... We grew a bit distant, but what can you do? They had to work to keep me healthy, and, and I knew that. But it still hurt, of course, but I'd always get so bored, so sometimes I'd slump out of the bed, grab my IV stand, and walk through the hospital. I'd see other kids, some crying while others sat in their bids, beds, stoic. I waved to a boy once, and he didn't even blink. I would never manage to get very far before a nurse would find me and herd me back into my room, and I'd huff and lie down frustrated. Sometimes they would feel bad for me and bring me a toy or a book. I would always end up coming home with a lot of stuffed animals, and that would make me happy enough. Once, though, I was discovered walking through the halls by an older doctor. He was bald with a short, scraggly beard, and the first thing I said to him was, Your head looks like a square! The previously worried expression on his face contorted into a smile, and then a laugh. <laughs> Well, you don't look... you look like a little bunny. I didn't understand that one. A lot of the bunnies I'd seen at the petting zoo could hop very high, and I couldn't, so I just told him that. His laugh subsided to a quiet smirk, and he cocked his head. I suppose so, he said, walking past me. But then he froze, slowly turning around. His smile faded. Actually, why aren't you in your room? I, I was going for a walk. Alone? He questioned, approaching me. Nobody would take me. Well, I could take you outside if you, if you wish. I thought for a moment, then grinned, excited. I had been in that particular hospital for almost a week without seeing the sunlight. I was aching to just leave already. For some reason, though, he looked more thrilled than me. He took my IV out, placed me in a wheelchair, and pushed me outside. It was about noon, and the sun, while initially blinding, felt nice against my skin, especially when combined with the chilly breeze. I, I wish I could go outside every day. You'll be able to. I promise, he replied. I have a gift for you. He gently lashed a silver necklace around my neck. At the end of the chain was a broom. A brown, furry lump. Do you know what this is? I shook my head. It's a rabbit's foot. Some people say they bring good luck, and this one came from a rabbit that was completely healthy its whole life. Sadly, in the wild, rabbits only live for a year or so. But a year of perfect health is better than nothing, isn't it? I simply nodded and looked back upwards. 
closing my eyes. At some point, as my senses drifted into the tranquility of nature, I fell into unconsciousness. I woke up from my dreamless slumber to a familiar ceiling, that of the hospital room. Rising from my pillow, I realized how easy it was to move. The nurses eventually came around to find me jumping on the bed with my newfound energy. Eventually, my family came and took me home. My immune system had miraculously grown stronger, and everything was okay. They didn't even notice the necklace, and after a while, I almost forgot it was there. But then a year later, the chain grew heavy. Every step left me out of breath. My energy was completely gone, and back to the hospital I went. As my parents and a nurse were talking, glancing at me every now and then with the same look of pity on their faces that I hated so much, I burrowed myself under the covers of my bed and eventually fell asleep. When I woke up, the room was empty. Then the same man who had taken me outside came storming through the door, clearly rushed and furious at something. But when he saw that I was awake, his demeanor quickly changed back into that fake grin. Are you doing well? No, I replied, nervously shifting in my bed. Well, then what is wrong? Is your, is your gift not working? I feel sick, like when I was here before. That said something off, I realized, as his face instantly contorted into a scornful expression, but not at me. He slapped his head with his palm, forcefully ranting on and on about how it only lasts a year. Meanwhile, I sat there, terrified. It's alright, I just forgot. The man finally exclaimed, approaching me. I can fix this for you. I can fix you. As he got closer, I opened my mouth, yearning to protest, to scream, but nothing came out. I woke up, buckled to the passenger seat of my mom's car. She smiled, looking at me through the rearview mirror. Hey there, sleepyhead. You feeling better? Uh, I think, I said, looking down. My necklace was different with the white rabbit's foot at the end of the chain rather than the brown one from before. The nurse said you were ready to leave. Do I have to go back? Only if we get sick again. I gripped the furry amulet in my hand, then glanced out of the window at the dark forest nearby. I won't get sick. That's what we were hoping for, my mom said, and we drove home in silence. On my 364th day away from that hospital, I went to bed. In the middle of the night, in a half-awake state, my eyes opened to the blurry sight of my window creaking open. As my head slumped downwards, I heard something crawl inside, then slowly step next to my bed. It fidgeted with my necklace, its cold, rough hands brushing against my chin and then left. When I awoke the next morning, I could barely remember it happening, though I thought it was just a dream. That is, until I realized the rabbit's foot was black. Now, ten years later, the thing keeps coming. Even when I lock my doors and my windows, it finds a way inside. I tried to take off the necklace, but the moment I removed it, my body felt heavy and I had to put it back on. It feels like I'm supposed to be dead. Like, these visits are the only thing keeping me alive. It's coming tonight. I think I'm gonna leave the door open. Goodness knows what will happen if I don't. Thank you all for watching and listening to this story. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you enjoyed enough, please consider liking and subscribing. I... It would help the channel out a lot, and if you comment, it would help it out even more. 
maybe check out my Twitter at SoloBladeVA and my, all my other links down in the description below. I'll see you all later. Roll the outro. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. See you next time.